perhaps you're like me and you scroll on your phone or you watch TV or you use your computer at night. You know this can affect your sleep, and so you are looking into some blue light blocking glasses to see how they can help. I'm going to take a scientific approach today using my spectrometer to actually look at how much light, how much blue light in particular, is getting through these different kinds of blue light blocking glasses. And I'm also going to tell you why these little test cards here with the little blue light that comes with them in the package are pretty much absolute garbage and you can't trust them. So I'm going to show you now how my USB spectrometer works. This is a fiber optic spectrometer. The light comes in the end here, goes to my spectrometer, which is USB connected. And you're seeing on my second monitor here, the actual uh, spectrum that I'm measuring coming off the, out of the spectrometer, out of my screen. So I'm pointing this now, I'm going to take the end of this. I'm going to point it directly at my computer monitor. And you can see here quite clearly the blue LED around 450 nanometers. It's very common, 450 to 460 nanometer blue LEDs. That's pretty much what the entire display industry and modern LED lighting industry are built on. You've got a green phosphor here and a red phosphor giving you the rest of the spectrum. Uh, if I point this up at the ceiling where I've got some lights, uh, these are LED lights, you can see the spectrum is very different. Uh, and but we still have that blue LED peak, but then we have a broad phosphor filling in the rest of the spectrum. So it's a different kind of light. Uh, I point this even out the window here and you can see that's kind of what the spectrum is of, of a, a cloudy day looks like here, more broad. Um, and then what I can actually do is take a look at these LEDs. Um, so this is one of those LEDs that comes with the blue light blocking glasses. And I'm gonna change some settings here real quick so that I don't overload my spectrometer. And I can take the LED and shine it right into the end of this spectrometer. And we can look at exactly where that peak is. So that peak from this LED is right around 400 nanometers, actually just a little below 400 nanometers. And then there's a tail that goes up to 420, very little up at 440 to 460, where a normal blue LED is. So these LEDs are actually almost, you could call them UV LEDs. 395 to 400 nanometer peak uh, with some width to it. So, so what we're seeing with our eyes is the blue light that's coming into the visible, but there's actually more in the UV than there is in the visible coming from these little lights that they give you. And then they give you these test cards that are sensitive to UV light. And so what that light is responding to, uh, what that card is responding to when I do this, so I shine this right on the card, you're going to see it's going to turn purplish. Let me do that a little closer so we can see it more clearly. All right, you can see how that responds to the blue light a little bit. Um, and then you're supposed to do it through the lens and the lens blocks that light. So the lens is effectively blocking this light, but it's blocking the light in the UV that's, that's impacting this card. I'm going to compare that to a blue LED. This is actually a blue LED. Again, I'm going to take my spectrometer, shine it right into it. This one you can see is around 460 even a little bit higher than 460 nanometers. That's a pretty common wavelength for a display, 450 to 465, something like that. Um, this blue LED light, when I put it up against this card, is gonna do absolutely nothing. So the card does not respond to the blue light from the LED. But of course, you know, blue light blocking glasses, I mean, you can see it just when I do this, it, it, it definitely impacts the blue light coming through. I bought three different highly rated glasses off of Amazon. One's more of a red tint, an amber or orange tint, and then a clear tint, all advertised as being good blue blocking glasses, all uh, 10 to $20 range. You can see with the darker ones, I mean, look at the blues in my shirt. You can't even see them, they look gray. Um, so that's definitely doing something. Here's the amber or orange one, definitely distorts your vision. And then the clear one looks pretty clear can see all the colors. We're going to do some analysis, spectral analysis and quantifying them to see which ones work and which ones don't to what extent. We're going to test out how well these work against an iPhone spectrum. So I'm going to turn on my phone to just a white spectrum, put my spectrometer up against it, and we can see quite clearly all the colors. And then if I put this lens in between the spectrometer and the phone, you can see it very effectively blocks both the green and the blue peak with these dark glasses. Now I'm going to quantify you that for you uh, in just a moment, but we're going to look at the other two glasses in the meantime. 
These are the amber kind of medium tint ones. Again, we've got all three peaks from the iPhone. Put this in between and let's see what happens to our spectrum. Almost completely eliminates the blue. There's a little bit of green left and still plenty of red. So a little bit different than the dark red ones. And then finally the clear ones. Once we put those in between the spectrometer and the phone, nothing happens. Uh, barely goes down ever so slightly, but um, really no considerable change in the spectrum. When you use the clear glasses, I'm not very surprised by that. Here in black is the native iPhone spectrum, no lens in place. In gray is when we have a clear lens, the orange is an orange lens and the red is a red lens. We can see pretty clearly here the impact that the lenses have on the optical spectrum. On the left side is the blue peak, in the middle is the orange peak, sorry, the, the green peak, and on the right is the red peak. How do these blue blocking lenses work? In theory, these should be blocking all the blue light or a considerable amount that's coming from a screen and hitting our eye. We're gonna quantify this in such a way that we can really compare the three lenses that I tested. So blue light transmission or BLT, these are just example numbers here, but let's say it cut down uh, from 100 photons to 25 photons as that light went through the lens. That would be a BLT, blue light transmission value of 25%. So 75% of the blue light is being blocked in that case. Visible light transmission, we're taking into account all of the visible wavelengths from 380 all the way up to 780 nanometers. Um, and in this case, in this example, we're getting a visible light transmission value of 50%. So for the blue case only, we're only taking the peak value or the integrated value of the blue peak, which is around 450 nanometers. So we're integrating from 380 to 500 to capture that. And in the visible case, we're integrating or taking the peak intensity values of all peaks. Um, I'm integrating in this case from 380 to 780 nanometers to capture all the light that my spectrometer is collecting anywhere near the visible. Let's go back to that iPhone spectrum again, now fully quantified. When we don't use a lens at all, everything is 100%, right? Um, when we put on the red lenses, we have 4% BLT, 38% VLT. So 38% of the visible light is getting to our eyes, but only 4% of the blue light is. When we put on the orange lenses, we're at 3% blue light transmission, 50% visible light transmission. So actually through this, things look a little bit more normal, although still distorted in color compared to the red lens. And then when we put on the clear lens, it really doesn't do much. It reduces all three peaks a little bit. So we get a BLT of 92% and a VLT of 92% as well. In the case of my Surface laptop, the spectrum is very different, but the results aren't that different. With the red lens, we have 3% blue light transition, 28% visible light transition, which is um, quite low and really things do look distorted on this. Um, and with the orange or amber lenses, we have a little bit higher visible light transition, closer to 46% and 4% blue light transition. Still very good, very low, good blue blocking. And with the clear lens, again, over 90%, both visible and blue light transition, transmission, uh, they're really not doing much to block any of the blue light that's coming from the screen that I'm looking at. So this begs the question, what are these clear lenses even doing and how are they being able to market them as blue blocking glasses if they're really not doing anything for the blue that's coming off of our screens? Well, I've got a different light source here. This is actually an incandescent. Um, this comes from my kid's lava lamp, in fact. But you'll see when I put the spectrometer on it, you get a nice broad black body type emitter here. I've zoomed in a little bit on the region of interest. And what we can do is look at what wavelengths these clear lens actually filter out compared to all this broad light that's coming off of um, this incandescent bulb here. So if I slip the lens in, look down at that 420, 410 nanometer mark, you can see out, in, out, in. You can see it very clearly filters out excellent below 410, which technically is still visible. Even 420 um, does a pretty good job of filtering out. By the time you get to 430, it's really not doing much. And remember, um, the blue LEDs from our displays are really mostly in the 450 and above. Um, that's true also for the OLED spectrum, right? So I'm going to go back to my OLED spectrum here on the iPhone. So here's the iPhone OLED spectrum. It's a little noisy because of my integration time, but you can see 
that there is very little at the 430 nanometer and below mark, which is where these clear lenses are actually filtering out. They're doing nothing to filter the light above 430 nanometers. So technically at 430, uh, that is technically considered still blue light. And if you wanted to filter some of the blue light from the sun, say, uh, or an incandescent like this, it would effectively filter some of that blue and it definitely will filter the UV uh, very well, but it's not doing much for you for the blue light that's coming from any of your screens that you're using. You may think I look ridiculous wearing three pairs of glasses, but I can assure you it's just as ridiculous as thinking that these clear lenses are doing anything for you for the blue light that's coming from your screens. What we learned today is that these blue lights that come with the lenses, they're actually UV lights. And these little cards that are sensitive to that, they're actually sensitive to UV. They're really not sensitive to the blue light that comes off of your screens. So if you want block, blue blocking glasses that you're gonna use around screens, these clear ones are not doing anything for you. It's gotta be amber or orange or red color or even yellow. Um, those are the ones that are gonna block light. I like these ones kind of in the middle. They're amber, they block well over 95% of the blue light. They leave me some green and red so I can still see on my screens what's going on. Um, and they, are, they just work well for me. So I appreciate you guys sticking around to watch today, like, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.